Hey gang, your old buddy Clay here. I'm back at Mountain Music Exchange again, of course. And today we are going to talk about the all new Epiphone 2024 inspired by Gibson Custom Les Pauls. <laughs> Okay gang, first and foremost, I know exactly what you're waiting for. Everybody wants to see what the new 59 looks like, and I know there are already probably a couple of videos posted with those already, uh, and you've seen them online and that sort of thing, but I'm not going to waste your time. Take a look at that. That is a very, very, all things considered historically accurate, Epiphone version of a 1959 Les Paul standard burst. This particular color here is called factory burst and quite frankly it's my favorite of the available finishes that are on these. You can get these in a couple of other bursts but factory burst to me just represents like the ultimate iconic color. I really enjoy it. Uh, you also get uh, with this you get a flame maple top and of course it's going to be a veneer but I will show you in the light how that veneer reacts with lighting changes. Quite frankly, if you didn't tell me it was a veneer or I didn't know it was a veneer, I wouldn't spend a whole lot of time questioning whether or not it's a veneer. That being said, you also get a two-piece mahogany back, one-piece mahogany neck. Uh, as far as specs go, if you get a Gibson Custom Shop 59 Les Paul, you're probably going to end up with a one-piece body and a one-piece neck, and it's very artful. There's great figuring here. but when you consider it $12.99, right? $12.99 for this guitar with a hard shell case, which I'll get into. Um, a Gibson USA Les Paul standard is going to be $29.99 and you are going to get a two piece back and a one piece neck. So when you compare that price point to the other price point, you're getting a really, really high amount of quality here. Uh, the neck and fretwork is really actually pretty darn good on these. When I bring the frets across, even on the higher, the lower, I don't hear any scratchy noises, anything like that. No fret nibs on this one, of course, as well. That's still, you know, sort of an Epiphone hallmark in that they don't follow up on that the way Gibson does. With Gibson, you would have fret nibs here, which is that the binding comes up over the frets. But quite frankly, the frets appear and feel like they're cut well enough that they're not sticking out, stabbing me, jabbing me. So I don't really miss the nibs at all. You're also going to get a historically accurate headstock with this. Um, and I will show you a little bit of a lineup as well. When I say historically accurate, I mean this is the shape of the 59 Les Paul. And it's little attentions to detail like this that I really, really appreciate. You're also going to get the standard looking sort of tulip tuners that you would get on a Gibson Les Paul, but these are going to be 18 to 1. So while looking historically accurate, they're probably actually going to perform a little bit better as far as being able to really dial in a little easier uh, when you get into that, am I almost in tune or not territory. You get a stamped serial number. You also get a really cool stamped logo that's like a double diamond, sort of the Epiphone inspired by Gibson Custom Hallmark now that you'll see on all the cases. You'll see on, of course, the back of this guitar as well. And all the other inspired by Gibson Customs. What I really think is cool about that is it's just a neat little stamp that's in there instead of... Some guitars have IGC, which is fine. Inspired by Gibson Custom. It's stamped in there. It's cool. There's nothing wrong with that, and I get it. But I do think it's just a nice little subtle nod. And I like that a lot, actually. You're also going to get an Indian Laurel fingerboard on this one. So, you know, if you're a complete purist, you may be a little upset as far as not using rosewood or anything like that. But that being said, I really think if you take some lemon oil to this and just play it and enjoy it for what it is, you will not miss the fact that this is not rosewood. Um, I've, I've said that in some of the other Epiphone videos, too. Um, it's a similar grain. It's a similar darkness. Like I said, just, just make sure it's good and, you know, oiled up with some lemon oil. And I don't think once you get into the groove of playing that you're really going to miss anything. There are a couple of little other attentions to detail here that I like. 
First off, you can tell that this is binding. Uh, in some of the other Epiphone models, the older standards, etc., you can tell that the binding sort of stops where the edge of the guitar going toward the front begins. And this one doesn't have that. You really have some, some quality binding work here that's done. And it looks good. It looks really good. This is what they would call a VOS finish on these models. It's a really a little more satin than that, in my opinion. I have a VOS Gibson Custom Shop SG, and it's definitely got some more gloss to the lacquer. You can tell a difference side by side, probably even in pictures. But I like the fact that they did this VOS style finish. It does sort of add to the custom aesthetic. Instead of just doing a big, you know, thick gloss polyurethane finish, they went for something a little more historically accurate as far as looks. If you ran across an old 59, it's probably not going to shine like new money. If you uh, buy a VOS 59, it is not going to shine, shine like new money. But you can actually take these. Trogly does a video on these that I really like. Um, not necessarily on this guitar, but on the ability to polish uh, like a satin finish into a pretty good semi-gloss finish. So you can really make this look about however you want, and I like that they've used this finish to let you be able to do that instead of having to try to do something crazy, strip and finish the whole thing again or anything like that. Uh, hardware and electronics. You are going to get Switchcraft Switch, Switchcraft Jack, uh, Mallory capacitors, and CTS pots. Uh, you're also going to get with this the the most expensive set of pickups that Gibson or Epiphone offers, you're gonna get the Gibson Custom Bucker pickups in these, which is a real, I can't really stress how important that is to find these in an Epiphone, okay? Um, there are only a few places you're gonna find these. You're gonna find them, of course, in these, uh, the new Epiphone ES uh, 1959 ES355. And you're going to find these in Gibson Custom Shops, and there's no in-between. You're not going to find a factory, at least as of the recording of this video, okay? Um, <laughs> you're not going to find a factory Gibson USA guitar that has these pickups in them. If you buy these pickups separately, these are $500 sets of pickups. And I can tell you as a person who has a guitar with these pickups, if you're into nuance and you're into the PAF sound, they do it right. They're worth it. They're really good. So I think that alone helps set this price point of $12.99, um, helps really drive that home. You know, for the outgoing 59 model with the Kalamazoo headstock that I'm sure most of you are used to by now, that uh, you guys also watched quite a bit, apparently, uh, of the older Kalamazoo headstock Epiphone videos that we did here, um, and we thank you very, very much for that. You'll know those have Gibson Burst Buckers, which are also, again, great PAF style pickups, but these Custom Bucker pickups are on another level. You're going to hear that in a little bit. I'll talk about that. Um, but they are on another level as far as just, you know, clarity. There is a bite. There is you know, I've never really played a ton of PAFs. I've heard some PAFs in videos, or I've heard maybe a couple here in the store. But, so I don't know, I can't I can't tell you the accuracy apples to apples on these versus a real PAF or anything like that. But these are the real deal as far as pickups that will cover any genre, from the cleanest to the dirtiest to the heaviest, they've got you. And they're really good. Now there are a couple of things I would probably nitpick if I were going to be a nitpicky kind of guy. And that would be, uh, you guys still have the three point truss rod cover here, the three screw, which is fine. Um, I get it. Epiphone would probably have to change their neck construction methods to a certain degree to a point that it might raise the price on this guitar a little bit more. So I understand that, I, you know. But what I do like about this truss rod cover is that it does have the very wide, historically accurate or custom shop accurate wide bevel around the edge. And you can see that it's very prominent as opposed to some of the more recent truss rod covers, uh, you know, Gibson USA, et cetera, which uh, are fine as well, but you know, the bevel's not as wide, it's not as historically accurate. But 
they're not all 59s. So, you know, I get it. Sitting on top of this Indian Laurel fretboard, by the way, uh, you got 22 frets and you have real mother of pearl inlays all the way down, which I think is also just a nice, cool touch. I'm not so sure that even the custom shops have those. They're not technically historically accurate, but they look gorgeous. Most of your standard line Gibson USA stuff does not have real mother of pearl. And you also have a real mother of pearl Epiphone logo up here, and it's even sort of yellowed out a little bit to denote age, which the custom shop does and uh, would probably be accurate to any 59 you would see right now. So just really, really cool stuff. You also get with this, uh, you get an ABR1 style bridge. It does have the wire retainer, but it does still go into the posts like a, a more modern Gibson standard line would do. Uh, a real ABR1 would have the post going directly into the body, but these have like, these go into a piece of metal that's already in the body. As far as, you know, tonally speaking, I don't think that really changes the game a whole lot. I don't think that changes a ton, but uh, it is not quite as historically accurate. That's fine by me. It still looks the part when you're looking here. It's narrower than the Nashville style. You get the wire retainer. So all the right stuff is there for the most part. These also come with a really, really nice hard shell case. I'm gonna show that to you now. The case has a sort of a pattern on it that really looks like the Lifton style pattern that you see now in a custom shop guitar. If you get a 59 Gibson custom shop guitar, it's gonna sort of have that sort of pattern on it. And it is very Lifton-esque with the pink interior, all the right stuff on that. You know, if you pick up both cases, you'll feel and see some differences. But I think for the most part, especially for the amount of money you're not paying to get this one. And also, the Epiphone Les Paul Custom comes with a case as well. Uh, we'll talk about that in just a second. But first, I want to go over some specs and things with you. Something I like and I noticed about this is this has the bigger headstock, which would be accurate to a Les Paul Custom. To fit the full-size split diamond in, to get all that binding, that multiply binding all the way around there, uh, you would have a bigger headstock. If you bought a Gibson Les Paul Custom, this is the headstock you would have. So. What I mean by that, or what I think is cool about that, is that they have changed the headstock shape to fit the model, to reflect the model or the model year or the model type. So you don't just get the Gibson open book headstock, you get the accurate Gibson open book headstock to the guitar that you find its Gibson counterpart having, which I think is neat. This one does come with a case as well. It comes with a black uh, Epiphone inspired by Gibson custom case with the goldenrod interior, which is, again, a, a, an Epiphone version of the case you would get if you bought a Gibson Les Paul Custom. You would still get a black case with goldenrod interior. There are some differences in the feel of the interior and exterior, but for the most part, you're getting a lot of that same thing for a lot less of your money. And you get Grover 18 to 1 tuners in this with a Gibson Les Paul Custom. I'm not sure that you get the 18 to 1s. If you do, let me know in the comments below that I made a mistake. Um, with this one, you still get the same specs. You still get a two-piece back. You still get a one-piece neck. You still get a maple top on this, which, again, is not necessarily historically accurate to an old Les Paul Custom but this is more of a mirror of the actual Gibson Les Paul Custom that you would order today, brand new. And I'll get into that in just a second. Um, you still get Switchcraft Switch, Switchcraft Jack, Mallory Capacitor, CTS Pots, Multiply all the way around the body, Single Ply up the neck, Multiply around the headstock, Gold Hardware. And the reason that I say that you're in more modern territory with this. These have the 490 and 498 Gibson USA pickups. Now, again, you're still in 1299 territory here. So you're probably asking or thinking to yourself, why would I pay the same price for a set of pickups that I can find in the $300 range when I could get that and get the same pickups that a Gibson Custom Shop has? Well, 
The Gibson Les Paul Custom has actually used the 490 and 498 pickups probably since the late 80s or early 90s, and they still use these same pickups to this day. So, when I say that this is sort of a, a, a recreation of the version of that guitar that you're going to get today, that's what I'm talking about. You're still using the modern pickups that the Les Paul Custom uses right now. If you buy one, 5K plus, from the Custom Shop, that's where you're at. Now, with this one, you do get a bit more of a modern bridge. You can tell it's sort of more along the lines of the Nashville style, although it does have a wire retainer. Um, it definitely has bigger posts that go into, not directly into the body. It goes into some metal that's already been put into the body. And you also get a lot tone tailpiece on this. With what that means is you're going to get, you're going to be able to change your strings on these, take the strings all the way off, and nothing's going to come loose or move here at all. It's all going to stay in place. So if you've got your action set just so, in a way that you you like, can't live without, I'm very guilty of doing this, then you are going to be in a sweet spot with string changes with this system. There is no dispute over this fretboard. This is an ebony fretboard, which is exactly what you get with a Gibson Les Paul Custom. There is no substitution here. You have real ebony, real mother of pearl inlays. You have a real mother of pearl Epiphone logo and mother of pearl split diamond. You still get, of course, the Epiphone inspired by Gibson Custom backplate. And you also get that stamp, which I'll try to get you a better shot of. At $12.99, I know there has been a little bit of concern at some point that at $12.99, maybe Epiphone's getting too big for its britches, too expensive, what have you. And I would have to wholeheartedly disagree with that. Uh, the reason why is there's just attention to detail here that you can't necessarily put into a production 699 guitar or 749 guitar. There are attentions to detail here. There's just hardware and equipment and electronics here that would bankrupt someone, I think, trying to make guitars at that price point um, in, on a mass scale. And I think the audience for this and for the 59 um, are folks who are really, really into Gibson guitars, folks who love these guitars, love their Gibson counterparts, right? And love the history and the influence of these guitars, or, you know, they have heroes that played these guitars. And that's where your audience is with that. You know, you can just get these guitars and be really, really close, if not spot on sound wise to some of your your guitar heroes or what you want to sound like personally, and you're not gonna break the bank with these. You're gonna be able to take these. When, when Epiphone says for every stage, you know, I think that that means, they mean for every stage of your guitar journey, but also for every literal stage that you get on. Everything is there, recording, playing live, it's all there. I mean, everything that you need that Gibson would give you in its counterpart is here in this guitar, and I, I think that's why people play these, and I think that's why people are going to enjoy these and buy these. I had to sneak these out of the sales floor today to make sure that I would have enough time to use these for the videos before they got bought. Um, and I really, really am a fan of this Black Custom. I really like it. I haven't mentioned it already, but it's gloss polyurethane, again, because if you bought a Black Custom, you would have a full gloss finish. So you're getting that with this as well. And with regards to the, the, the price points, by the way, Epiphone still makes those 699 guitars. They still make those 799 guitars. Um, so you're not gonna miss out on being able to have those. They didn't delete those out of the inventory just to make these. But in order for these to be closer tonally and visually to their Gibson counterparts, they do have to cost a little more. So, I mean, I get it. Neck profiles on both of these, by the way. I actually think maybe because of the gloss finish that the custom neck is a little rounder, is a little bigger, but this does have a very rounded, I'm not going to say huge baseball bat, but it does have sort of a rounded 59C profile. It feels good in your hand. It feels like it feels full, but it doesn't feel, you know, overbearing or too much. I have pretty small hands, if you can't tell, and I can, I can get around this fretboard pretty easy. Um, again, the custom feels a little bit bigger, but that may be because of the gloss finish, a little, little thicker, a little fuller, and that's fine. Okay, so without further ado, let's get to it. Um. 
Thank you all a ton for watching the videos. Thank you all for subscribing to the channel. Uh, and thank you a million for watching the old videos on the Epiphones. I even wore the same outfit today to commemorate uh, the fact we got another round of cool Epiphone inspired by Gibson Customs in. Well, that's going to have us. I'm going to get these back out. And check us out online at mountainmusicexchange.com. Check out that new arrival section where you'll find these guitars and any other new or used gear that we have in stock. Also, check us out on TikTok, check us out on Instagram, and check us out on Facebook at Mountain Music Exchange. Gang, I'm Clay. You rock. Have a good one.